morning, church. God is good. Amen. Lord, we come today with expecting hearts. Lord, we come to you today knowing that you are all that we need. And so, God, I pray that you would be exalted and glorified and lifted up in this place as we praise and worship you, God. We pray that you would come by your Holy Spirit, come and have your way in our midst today, oh God. You are worthy of the highest praise. Everything that we are, everything that we have, you are worthy, oh God. We thank you for the blood of Jesus this morning. We thank you for salvation this morning. We thank you that you woke us up this morning, oh God. We thank you for health in our bodies this morning, oh God. We thank you for breath in our lungs this morning. And with our breath, we will praise you and we will worship you today, oh God. Be glorified, be pleased, be honored today. In Jesus' name. Amen.
a river that flows. There is a river that flows unrestrained from your Canyons of mercy so deep I could never deny. Let's sing that again. There is a river. There is a river that flows unrestrained from your Canyons of mercy so deep I could never deny. Father, your wonders. Father, your wonders are endless. Open my eyes to believe. Awake my soul.
right up there. You now sometimes we sing just because it's the song and maybe our mind's not fully there, but I want to ask you a question. Do you really believe that he took our place? That he bore our cross? That he laid down his life so that we can be set free? Now understand, that's like someone being on debt. Bro, no, it's not really, but let me just make an illustration because it's a million times more because we're talking about eternity. But it's like somebody being on death row and having and facing the death penalty and having no opportunity or no way that they can be paroled and somebody coming forward and being able to take their place. How do you think that person would feel when they're set free? When they walk out of prison doors? Surely not how some of you are looking this morning. Come on, let's believe what we sing. Let's sing what we believe. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Come on, because He's worthy. Because He is God and He's worthy of our praise. Come on, give Him a shout of praise. Come on, don't wait for the next song. Praise Him right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is amazing grace. Just to, just to get a little blessing. I came through to get a big blessing. I came through to see crooked paths straight, mountains move, valleys brought up. God making a way where there is no way. God doing what no other power can do. Oh, I wish I had a few more men that would come forward. I thank God for the couple of men that come forward. But it seems like a whole lot more women know how to praise God more fervently and more passionately than men. But I know there's some more men out there. So I want more people, not just women, but men, to come forward and to sing, wow, he took my place. Come on, let's sing it again. Come on, let's sing it like we need it all over this place. Can I keep? Oh, how can I keep from seeing? 
the weapon.
You love us when we fail. You love us when we mess up. You love us when no one else loves us. Jesus, you walk in when everyone walks out. God, your love is like nothing we've ever known. And so, God, we're grateful. May you open the eyes of our understanding. May we get a revelation this morning of the love of God that passes all knowledge. It is so wide, it is so deep, it is so broad, it is so high that it takes a revelation. And so God, we pray, let our eyes see it, let our spirit know it, God. For that will change our lives. For all time and for all eternity. We thank you. Can you just take one more minute and just thank God for his love. Thank you. No, no, no panic, Kate. Just come on, lift your voice up. Come on. Just say thank you, Jesus. Come, sometimes it's easy to clap. Come on, but open your mouth and say, Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated if you can this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus. Don't play with me. Confess your sin. I am here to forgive you. Yeah. I will cleanse yeah. you. And you will not be the same again. Don't go back with that which is in you. I am the Lord. I see you. I know you. Amen. You cannot hide it from me. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap of praise. Woo! Hallelujah. Give heed to the word of God. Amen. Amen. Come on, even while I'm preaching, you can ask God to forgive you. Amen. Even while I'm preaching, the Holy Spirit can reveal something to you. Amen. Well, this morning, I'm going to go right into the word of God. I'm excited about the word. How many of you are excited about God's word? Yes. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you, uh, singers and musicians. I've entitled my message this morning, Running Towards Your Giant. Running Toward Your Giant. Now, I, I, when I was thinking of this title, I almost, I almost changed it. I almost changed it. Um, I said, maybe that's not correct. I wanted to put Running Towards Your Giants. I think maybe a few people understand what I'm saying this morning. For the rest of you, I'll break it down. You know, sometimes in life, it's not just one giant. Sometimes Goliath brings his brothers with him. Amen. Sometimes it's a multitude of situations and things that come against you. Come on, I'm not, I'm not just talking small time. I'm talking about giants that come against us. But you know what I believe God is doing in this place? You know what I believe God is doing in your life? God is giving you your fight back. Amen. 
God is giving you your passion back so that you can run toward your giant this morning. I've entitled my message, Running Towards Your Giant. Now, I want you to understand something, that in our humanness and in our natural uh, ability, we want to run from our giants. But you know what God wants to do? He wants to give you a passion once again. Come on, I'm talking to you. Turn to the person next to you say, he is talking to you. So everybody gets covered this morning. Amen. God wants to give you a passion back to where you run towards your giants. You say, how can that be? It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know what David said in the Psalms? He said, through my God, I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. If you don't know what a troop was, it was a, a whole army of soldiers. He said, through my God, I can run through them and I can leap over a wall. You and I can do the same today by the grace of God. Can you say amen? amen? Now, it used to be that most people, all the people in the church, knew the story of David and Goliath. Lord, I wish it was still so. But we live in a biblically illiterate world, and uh, even in the church world. But, but not here at Victory. I'm talking to those that are watching on live stream. Why don't you take a minute right now and share this so some people can learn something. Amen? amen. Would you go on Facebook? and share this, but, but we're living at a time where uh, people don't even know the story of Goliath. They hear about it in sports, they hear about it in politics, they hear it about it in the world because it's become a metaphor of someone who, was, who, who didn't have a chance, but they overcame great odds. They, they won a battle they shouldn't have won. And so you hear it said, well, that was a David and Goliath, or he was David against Goliath. People don't even know that's in the Bible. Some of you are saying, oh, Lord, have mercy. I didn't know it was in the Bible either. But just in case, for some of you that are not too familiar with the story, can we just roll that video clip and uh, let's, let's see it uh, acted out as best as Hollywood could do. The Philistine threat continues to grow. Now they have a new champion. Goliath. Here do I walk in the valley of the shadow of death. Fear no evil. You are with me. Thy rod and staff, they comfort me. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Israel is found in 
so impressed me about this story years ago that, that jumped off the page of scripture was a revelation to me when I saw in, in chapter 17 of 1 Samuel, if you're not there, uh, just take a moment to turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17. It says in verse 48, 1 Samuel 17, 48, and it was so when the Philistine arose and came near and drew near to meet David, that David hastened and he ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. What jumped out at me was that David, full of faith, he had fire in his eyes, faith welling up in his soul. He ran towards his giant. And what so impressed me is because he ran towards him. We tend to run away from our giants. We tend to run away from those overwhelming circumstances in our life. I tend to do that. We, we tend to, to hide and run in fear. And, and, and if you don't think that's remarkable, look at the whole, look at the scripture in this story. The whole nation of Israel or all the army was in fear of Goliath. Now what we have here in this story is a winner-take-all battle that Goliath was issuing against the Israelites. He was the Philistine champion and he came out and he said, listen, you just choose one man. This is going to be a winner-take-all so that the rest of the army doesn't have to fight. We don't have to lose any more men. Just winner-take-all. If your champion beats me, we become your slaves. If we beat you, we become subjected to you. And so the Bible tells us that, that Israel and the Philistines, they were the perennial uh, annual enemies of each other. They were like the Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees. <laughs> They were like the New England Patriots and the Giants. No pun intended. The New York Giants. This was every year, every year, every season, there was a battle between these two nations. And God had called the Israelites to inhabit the land. And if they obeyed God, if they, if they did God's will, they would enter into that land and enjoy a land of blessing, a land flowing with milk and honey. And so here are the Philistines coming out against the Israelites to push them out of their land, push them out of their inheritance. And, and they come and they meet in the valley of Elah. 
And there was this big, long, wide, expansive valley that separated two mountaintops. And on one side were the Philistines, on the other side were the Israelites. And so here comes Goliath, and he issues this challenge. And for 40 days, the Bible says, morning and at night, he challenges the people of God. And there was not found one person who would stand up to this Goliath. Now understand, they were not going to stand up in, in mortal combat uh, uh, with human energy or human strength. They were going to rely upon their God. And you see, even, even uh, Goliath would, would taunt the Israelites. Send me a man. Surely you could send one of your champions. Where, where is your God? And you see, this went on for 40 days and, and all of the army were in fear. And, and if anyone should have stepped forward, it should have been Saul. Because the Bible says he was head and shoulders above the rest. He was chosen because of his stature, because of his charisma. He was chosen because of, of the outward. And, and, and he, he was very impressive. But he was living in fear because his heart was not in communion with God the way it should have been. His faith was not at the level it should have been. And so the whole nation was running in fear. And, and Goliath would taunt Israel day after day, 40 days in the morning and at night. And isn't it just like the enemy of our soul? Isn't it just like some of the things we're facing? It's not one day. It's not five days. It's day after day. It's in the morning when we wake up. And it's fear at night when we go to bed. The enemy of our soul. The Goliath of our soul is challenging us. And coming against us. And trying to move us out of our position as children of God. And rob us from our inheritance. And take away all that God has done in our life. And so this challenge is issued. And this is all happening. And now, and now here we have David, a shepherd. He's, he's at home taking care of the sheep. Now I want you to keep in mind, I want you to understand that he had already been anointed to be the next king of Israel. Samuel had already anointed David to be the next king who would succeed Saul. Because the Bible says that God had rejected Saul because he had he had worshipped idols. He had sought a, out a witch. He had, he had been, been just one who had not honored God in his heart. And so God said, I sought for me a man after my own heart. And I have found it in David. Amen. So David is a young shepherd boy. He's anointed by Samuel. But, but here he is faithfully now taking care of his sheep. So his father calls him one morning and says, I want you to take some food supplies. I want you to take some meatballs and macaroni. I want you to, for, that's for the Italians. I want you to take fufu. That's for the Nigerians. I want you to take rice and beans. That's for the Hispanics. I want you to take cassava. That's for the Liberians. I want you to take a ham sandwich. That's for the Irish. <laughs> Come on, you can smile. It won't hurt you. You can smile in church. And so his father, Jesse, asked David to take some supplies to the front line to his three older brothers, Eliab and the other two brothers who are now fighting in Saul's army. And they're on the front line. So, so David, imagine, David is asked now to take, to be a gopher, to take some sandwiches to his brother. But, but think about that for a minute. I, I, I want to digress a little bit. Here's David. He's been anointed to be king. He's next in line. He was anointed by Samuel. But he's still taking care of his sheep. His father asked him. He, he's a teenager. His father asked him. Imagine today. <laughs> He woke up early. Now that's a miracle for a teenager. He woke up early to go and to do his father's bidding to take sandwiches to his brothers on the front line. You know, if it was today, first of all, the teenager wouldn't be up until one o'clock in the afternoon. We have a school next door that, that they, used to, they used to have their school hours from, uh, I think, 7.30, 8 o'clock to 2.30. But, you know, they had to change it now. It's 8.30, 9 o'clock till 3.30 because... Kids were not waking up early enough, but anyway. that's another message. But my point is that here is, here is 
David, he's been anointed to be the next king and, and, and he's doing menial tasks. But I want you to understand something. If you give dignity to the ordinary, God will give you the anointing for the ordinary. Oh, that's a revelation. Some young people, some people who have a heart for ministry, you've got to understand that God looks at your heart when it's doing the mundane, when you're doing the ordinary, when you're doing the simple, when you're doing things that nobody else wants to do. God looks at your heart when you do the ordinary with a heart after God. God will do the extraordinary in your life. Can you say amen? So David takes the supplies to his brothers. He takes the food and, and he hears on the front line, he hears this giant saying things against Israel and against the God of Israel and something stirs in his heart. And he says, he turns to one, he says, what, what is, what's going on here? What, what did the king say if someone takes him out? The king said, you'll get his daughter. You'll get tax exemption. Now that's a good thing. How many of you would like no more IRS, no more state and local tax? And he will be enriched. But David really wasn't concerned about that. He just wanted to know why is no one stepping forth? There's not one person in all of them. Think about it. These are God's chosen people. These are the Israelites. This is King Saul. And no one is going stepping forward with faith in their heart. With a willingness to step forward and do the will of God. I believe God is stirring the people here at Victory Amen. Church. I don't care if you're young or if you're old. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. To use you for his glory. To stand up in the midst of a wicked and adulterous generation. And say Jesus Christ is still Lord. The only way to heaven is through the shed blood of Jesus. There is no other answer. Hell is hot. Heaven is pure. Sin is damnable. And God will forgive you. If not, there is a price to pay. God is still looking for a people. Can you say amen? So here we have David on the front line. And, 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 then, and then you know, you know what, what happened? Eliab challenged David when he heard David asking questions. Eliab, his older brother, a typical older brother, says, what are you doing here? We know the pride and insolence of your heart. You've come to watch the battle. And then, so, so right now he's condescending to him. Right now he's being critical. Right now he's tearing him down. And then he says to him, he says, who did you leave your few sheep with? Yeah. Now that's sarcasm. His words were dripping with, 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 with sarcasm, dripping with condensation, dripping with just negativity. But you know what David did? He turned away from that. God help us to turn away from some battles to fight the bigger battle. Amen. Amen. Oh, let me tell you, you, you need to be giving good in the offering this morning because you got to give extra for this message. Somebody just got to give something for this message. God had mercy. You see, Eliab began to criticize, began to, he picked a fight with David, but David had something in his soul that, you know what, he knew, listen, this battle ain't worth fighting. You know, the devil is a master strategist. You know, he's been working for 6,000 years on humanity with all of his lies, with all his deceptions. Yeah. Satan knows your number. Turn to the person next to you and say, he knows your number. <laughs> Come on, he knows your number. He knows what buttons to push That's to right. get you to get an attitude. Right. Some of you are so easy. Yeah. Some of you are so easy. Some of you watching by line, you're so easy. You're still watching church online two, <laughs> two years later. Some people got offended because we asked them to move out of a seat. They were sitting in and sit somewhere else. Come on now. You need to understand. That's, that's, you got a bad spirit if that offends you. You need to imagine, imagine David. Imagine if he turned to Eliab and got in a fight with him. Maybe not physically, but got in a fight and said, who do you think you're talking to? Samuel was the one who anointed me to be king, not you. I'm the next king. Why don't you stop practicing bowing down to me? David did none of that. 
Come on, are you hearing that? I want to I I re inspire faith in you this morning. I want to inspire wisdom. He turned away from Eliab. He said, listen, I don't have time for this. You know, sometimes my wife and I, when we get a little frustrated about some situations, you know what I like to say? I don't know if you'll get this. I like to say, that's small potatoes. <laughs> You know that, that saying, I don't know, it might be different in different cultures, but, but it's small potatoes, come on. Some things are small potatoes. In other words, they just, don't bother with that. Don't go down to that. Don't go down to that level. And, and you know what I, I love? One of my favorite authors over the years has been F.B. Meyer. And I just got to read something to you because it's so good. Um, he, he writes a lot of biographies of Bible characters. And he said this. About, about this very um, scenario. I want you to get this. I want to read it because I don't want to miss a word. He said, David, however, ruled his spirit and answered softly, surely my father's wish to learn of your welfare was cause enough to bring me here. Mm. Now listen to what F.B. Meyer says. It was there, it was there that the victory over Goliath was really won. To have lost his temper in this unprovoked assault would have broken the alliance of his soul with God and drawn a veil over the sense of God's presence. Amen. Sometimes the real battle that you're going to fight, you gain the strength and you overcome in the smaller battles that prepare you for the bigger battle. You see, God is looking to raise up some of you this morning to run against your Goliath. Yes. To yes. run towards your enemy. Yes. So the question is this morning, what are giants? They are problems. They are pressures. They are pains. They are addictions. They are sins. That we all face from time to time in our lives. Giants can cause major problems in our lives, threatening to destroy us. De the devil is playing for keeps. The devil is playing for keeps. This is not small potatoes. This is the big picture. This is for eternity. You see, what is a giant? We're not talking literal giants. Do you know that Goliath stood nine and a half feet? Nine and a half feet. Nine, think about nine and a half feet tall. He had armor on. He had, you know what? The, 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 the movie doesn't show, the video didn't show. He had, a, he had an armor bearer before him carrying a full body shield. He had on 125 pounds of mail, of covering. 120, his, his sword, the head of his spear actually was 25 pounds. Think about what kind of imposing figure. And David is just a shepherd boy. But what we're talking about this morning is not literal giants. We're talking about figurative. A giant can be anything. Listen, a giant can be anything that seeks to distract, to detour, or ultimately destroy us. Anything that is opposed to God's good plan for our lives. Come on, somebody say amen. A giant is anything that comes against us that is against the good plan of God in our lives. We are facing some giants. Hello? We are facing some obstacles. I guarantee you every single one of you here this morning is facing a giant of one shape or size or one predicament or another. Jesus said the devil has come to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Amen. Some giants that we might be facing. The giant of fear. Resentment. Guilt. Shame. Loneliness. Discouragements. Self-destructive habits. Addictions. Sins. The giants are hell bent on destroying us. Amen. Giants 
The giants that are before us, please hear me this morning, they must be slain. They yes. must be killed. They yes. must be yes. done away with. Amen. They must Amen. be removed. Amen. How do you see your giants this morning? How do you see them? How do you know them? You see, we're all in a battle. You got to come to realize this morning that I'm your pastor. I'm trying to help you. We have a body of believers. We try to help one another. But you know what? Ultimately, we're responsible for our own future. No one else is going to do this. I can't fight your Goliath. You can't fight my Goliath. Yes, we can pray for one another. But ultimately, there has to, be, there has to come that decisive moment where we step forward. And in the name of the Lord, we come against it. There has to be that moment. You see, the reality in life, we all make wrong choices. If you haven't made a wrong choice, you just did now because you lied. <laughs> we all make wrong choices and we have to live with the consequences of those choices. But I'm glad there is a God of mercy and grace yes. who mitigates and minimizes those, those consequences and gives us another chance to go at it. Amen? Amen. Some people don't give us another chance. Some people will never forget what we did. I have people 30 years ago, they still remember the word I said. You know, because pastors can't make mistakes, you know. Pastors are perfect, so I mean... You can make all the mistakes and we still love you and welcome you back, but don't let the past... Well, I don't make mistakes because I'm perfect. <laughs> but I did one time with one person. <laughs> and they never forgot it. Still talking about it. God have mercy. Amen. Oh, Jesus, what was I saying? But see, we all make wrong choices. We can excuse it. We can make excuses and say, oh, I didn't grow up in a good family. My neighborhood wasn't the best neighborhood. Or we could accuse. That's the blame game. We begin to point the finger at everybody else. That, that game started not by Hasbro or Mattel. It started in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve. Eve blamed the serpent. Adam blamed Eve. And he also blamed God. He said the woman you gave me. Some of you are still doing that. The spouse you gave me. But then we have to come to the place of making a choice. I'm responsible for my future. Yeah, that's right. I choose to accept the grace of God and yes. start over and go at it again. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. We look at this in the life of David as a shepherd boy. He goes to the front line. He had to overcome a lot of stuff. But you know what? He's able to go to the front line. And, 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 and there's not, never been anything like this that, that a young shepherd boy defeats a giant like that. When no one else would be able to step forward, David did. Now, understand, we have the same resources David has. We have the same, same faith. Amen? Right, yeah. We have the same God. Yeah. That's right. We have the same resources. Matter of fact, we have an advantage over David. That's right. You know what it is? The Bible. We have the story of David. Right. David didn't have a story. Yeah. David didn't have a David and Goliath story. He didn't have anything to go by. You and I have the word yeah. of God. Yeah. We have this story that there is a David who he defeated a Goliath. That means a Kelly can defeat a Goliath. That means an Angela can defeat a Goliath. That means an Eduardo can defeat a Goliath. Why? Because of the Spirit of God and the Word of God this morning. Come on, give God praise. You see, I want to just give you one point. I gave you a lot of points. One point in my sermon. And just finish, and maybe I'll conclude it next week. But but this is too good. I want I want you to get this. Listen, I want you to get it. You know, you know the sayings in the world that really don't um, uh, measure up when it comes to the principles of God. You know, people say um, it's not what you know, it's who you know, right? right? Mm -hmm. Other people uh, they say what you don't know won't hurt you. How many of you know that doesn't work when it comes to the Word of God? Right. Come on. The Bible says my people are destroyed 
because of a lack of knowledge. My people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Because there's a famine of the word of, of hearing the word of God. People are starving. People are destitute. That's why we need to get into the word of God ourselves. We need to read it regularly. We need to memorize the scriptures. And we need to hear good preaching and good teaching by coming to church regularly. Can you say amen? Jesus said you'll know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Yes. Come on, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to encourage you. God help me by the Holy Spirit to inspire your people this morning to put a, a run, to put a bounce in our step, to run towards our Goliath, no matter how bad it is. Listen, I'm not talking philosophically. I'm not talking from a, an ivory tower somewhere. I'm not talking from, from a person who hasn't gone through pain and suffering and trials. I have gone through, I have fought some battles, I've gone through some hell, but I want you to know I know. I know it's not easy this morning. I'm not saying it's easy. But I'm saying it's doable. I'm saying by the grace of God, we can get back that passion. By the grace of God, we can go at it again. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. We can go at it again. God can give us that grace to fight the battle again. Not to succumb, not to give up, not to quit. You know how many people I meet sometimes and they stop coming to church and, and come to find out and just, oh, I'm going through tough times. Hello? Are you the only one? Oh, Pastor, it's been very difficult. I know. That's why I keep going to church. We need church. We need worship. We need the word. We need fellowship. Yes. I didn't say it was easy. It wasn't easy for David. So the question is, and I've already touched on, but I, I want to bring this to the close. We still have to share a few announcements and pray and, 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 and bring our tithes and our offerings to the Lord this morning. But one point I want to I want to leave you with out of my several points I've already given you. I don't know what point this is. At least my sermon's not pointless. <laughs> So how do you defeat your Goliaths? How do you defeat your Goliaths? There are several things we need to know. Number one, we need to know what God says about us. Amen. We need to know what God says about us. Turn to the person next to you and say, you need to know what God says about you. You see, we have to find our identity in God. Yes. Amen. Amen. We have to find our identity, our self-worth, yes. our sense of well-being yes. in what God has said about us. Amen. Right. Some of us are still basing our self-worth on the metrics, on the methodologies and the ways of the world. We're still basing our self-worth on our net worth, our net worth, yeah. how much money we have, yeah. right. how much money we make, what kind of car I drive. Some of us are buying cars with money we don't have <laughs> to impress people we don't like, to pay bills we can't pay. <laughs> Why? Because we're still basing our self-worth. And we live in a culture, you know, some of the things we base our self-worth on. Here are some of the things right here. We base our self-worth on money. We base our self-worth on our looks. Come on. Don't look at me like that because I don't go on Facebook, but, but I do know how some of you post your pictures. <laughs> Selfies. Coming, oh, this is church day. Then some of you are in, dancing in the club. Now you're, there night, but now you're in church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're basing our, our self-worth on looks. Please don't do it on looks. Did you ever look at uh, some, some of the most beautiful, you know, you know in Hollywood, you know in the modeling industry, when you reach your th 30s, you're done? Yeah. Think about that. 
If you think looks are everything, I want you to go Google some of the, the most good looking people according to the standards of the world in the 50s and 60s. I want you to go look at those pictures and I want you to look at what they look like now. Hello? You look at the picture. But that's not where the world is going. You can't base your self-worth, it's fleeting. You can't base your self-worth on, on your, your, your money or your education. You know, you can't base it on those things. You see, when you look at David, he had to fight for his identity in God because it seems he wasn't affirmed and encouraged growing up. And I want to bring this to a close, and, and I want to have an altar call, and I want people to run to meet their Goliath. Amen. I want you Amen. to run to the altars this morning. Amen. Come on, don't sit back like this is a good show, and it's going to be over, and I'm going back to my life. No, you're in a battle with Goliath. Right. You're in a battle with a giant that wants to take you out, yep. wants to destroy your life. Yep. He's not content just to destroy your life, but your families. Yep. Your finances, your yes. ministry, yes. everything about you. Yes. We have an enemy that's come to kill, steal, and destroy. That's right. So I want you to run to the altars in a moment to face your Goliath. But you see, David had to find his identity in God because when he was growing up, he didn't get it. First Samuel chapter 16. When we first meet David, we find out that. Samuel the prophet is called by God to go to the house of Jesse in Bethlehem and he's called to anoint the next king of Israel. This is a big deal. He goes to the house and, 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 and Jesse the father knows that what, what's going on is this, this is a, a sacred moment. This is a significant moment. The prophet came. You know in the Bible, when a prophet came to town, uh, one instance he came to town and the Bible says they all, got, they all shook in fear and said, do you come peaceably? Why? Because a prophet usually only came on the scene when there was a problem. A prophet usually came to thunder out uh, uh, denunciation or correction when there was disobedience or rebellion. Uh, you know, so he came on the scene and, and, and when Samuel came, this was a big deal. So, so, so he says, we're going to have a feast and I've come and, 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 and where are your sons? So what does Jesse do? He parades his oldest son, Eliab. And, and, and even, even Samuel, and his, he was a prophet of God, but he was still human. He said, surely this is the Lord's anointed. He was good looking. He was of great stature. He looks kingly. The Lord said, I haven't chosen him. Samuel, uh, Jesse brings his next son. His next son. The Lord says, neither have I chosen him. Samuel, one after another, one after another, finally goes through seven of, of Jesse's sons. And, 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 and Samuel says, wait a minute. God sent me here to anoint the next king of Israel. Do you have any more sons? Where, where, where is, the, where, is this someone that we missed? Yeah, yeah. And Jesse said, yes, there's one more. He's keeping the sheep. Samuel says, bring him. I will not sit down. Bring him in. Well, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samuel, took out the vial of oil. And you know, I love the way they did it. Just got a little dab on his forehead, not a little cross. He took the vial and he poured out a whole ram's horn. Oil dripping down him. Anointed him to be the next king. But, but what I'm trying to say, what I want you to get this morning is, listen, David... The youngest boy doing a, a menial task, taking care of the sheep, not even invited to the party. Now, now please, let's take your rose-colored glasses off and let's look at the Bible for what it is. You know, we gloss over things. Mm -hmm. How did David feel? Wasn't even... All right, let me break it down to you because you're not, you're not getting it. On Facebook, they don't like your post. They don't... They don't do like, they don't make a comment, but someone else they know you don't like, they don't, they're commenting all about that more. They're having a party, but they don't invite you to it. You're excluded from the club. How does that make you feel? Come on, listen. David was, was a young boy, and he's not even invited. His father doesn't even think he's worth bringing to the party. Coming to the feast with, with the prophet Samuel. I don't know about you, but I'm sure 
he felt left out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Come on, some of you get offended if I don't even say hi to you. Imagine think how David felt. Come on. <laughs> the prophet of God overlooks or overlook when, when the prophet is there, Jesse's there, the brothers are there, David's not even acknowledged. Don't tell me he had there wasn't some dysfunction in that family. That's right. Hello? Yeah, right. Come on, this is real life. Come on, we battle with insecurities. We battle with fears. Psychologists tell us that our, that our, our sense of well-being is, is predicated many times, most times, on what the most important person in your life, usually your parents, thought of you. Hello? The most important person in your life. What am I saying to you this morning? Let's let the most important person in our life be Jesus. Come on, don't give just a, a patty cake. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So David, David is not invited to the party. When he goes to the front lines, his brothers condescend to him. His brothers are negative. His brothers think he's, he's not worth being there. He's a nobody. Again, David had to find his self-worth in what God said about him. Amen. Amen. Come on, are you, are you getting this this morning? Yes. You see, when we, we face the battles of our life, when we face the giants... We need to know what God says about us. Yeah. Yeah. Not basing our self-worth upon the wrong standards of the world. Yeah. We are so, so affected by social media. Mm. Please, please, I know it sounds redundant. I know I sound like an older person, especially among young people. But you know the statistics that teenage girls are affected by what they see and it causes insecurity when they look at their own body because they're looking at these images of the influences of influencers in our culture that are on drugs that are committing suicide that are so unfulfilled because they got it all but they're still not satisfied they're not fulfilled because you cannot be fulfilled with the things of this world only Jesus only Jesus satisfies. So what does the word of God say? Ephesians chapter 1. It says we're blessed. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 says we're chosen. Verse 5 says we're predestined. Verse uh, 5 also says we're adopted. Verse 6 says we're accepted. Verse 7 says we are redeemed. Amen. I told you the story before of a little boy that was put to bed by his mom. And every night she would say to him, you're my superhero. You're my mighty warrior. You are my superman. She would say that every night to him to build him up, to encourage him. One night in a hurry, the mother put him to bed and, and, and didn't use, do her usual declarations over her son. She went back to her room and began to, to get ready for bed herself. And from her bedroom, or from his bedroom... The boy cried out, Mom, you forgot to tell me who I am. You see, some of us, we've forgotten who we are. Mm -hmm. The Word of God tells us who we are. Amen. We are blessed. We are accepted. I'm going to ask the singers and the musicians to come forward. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet this morning. Come on, come on, let's let faith arise. Amen. Come on, some of you, you've been dragging. Some of you have been running and hiding from your giants. Some of you overwhelmed by your giants. I get it. I understand. I'm not in any way condescending, but I know what that's like. But God's given us a fight back. Yes. God's given us a, a bounce in our step back. Yes. Come on, God's given us that, that run, Thank that run Jesus. in our step. Come on, we're going to run towards our Goliath this That's morning. That's right, yeah. amen. You see, the devil is always trying to attack your identity. That's right. And he'll use people. Mm -hmm. People who are critical. People who walk out on you. People who don't forget the mistake you made 48 years ago. Other things, social media, they'll all tear us down all tear us down and that's a work of the enemy because when you're when you're broken down like that 
you don't have the confidence to face your Goliath. Right? Amen? Amen. So we need to understand where our identity lies. That's what Jesus, that's what Satan tried to do to Jesus in the wilderness of temptation. 40 days, Jesus is praying and fasting. The three temptations, they, there were three different temptations, but each one of them, you know how Satan started the, the dialogue? If, if you be the son of God, what was he doing? He was trying to break him down. He was trying to weaken his resolve, his authority. If you're a child of God, you would never have done that. If you were a Christian, you would never have made that mistake. If you were a Christian, you would have never said that. If you were a Christian, if you were a minister, if you, all those things, if, to try to break you down, to try to weaken your resolve. But what did Jesus do? He said, Satan, it is written. He took the sword of the spirit. He took the word of God. He said, I know who I am. And he said, it is written. And you have to do the same thing this morning. Please, I don't know where you're at. Don't say, well, I'm a new Christian or I'm an old Christian. I've been through this. None of that means anything right now. Right now, the whole thing is you have to get your sense of identity from God. Yes, hallelujah. You have to know this morning. Jesus said, behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. You shall tread upon serpents and scorpions, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. John 1, 4 through 4, actually. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You see, we go against the Goliaths in our life with the confidence that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. You see, many of us don't believe in ourselves because we weren't recognized or encouraged by our parents. If that's the case, it's time to rise up and reclaim who we are. Amen. Amen. Stop praying that God will, will strip away the veil. God will take away the scales from our eyes. And according to Ephesians chapter 1, that we would know the hope of our calling. That we would have the eyes of our understanding enlightened that we may know. Yes. Come on, the Holy Spirit wants to reveal. I'm just, they're just words I'm speaking. Unless the Holy Spirit anoints it, unless you have an ears to hear and a heart to perceive this morning. Come on, I want us to sing that song. I see a victory. And I love the phrase of that in that song. I'm not backing down from any giant. Because I know. Because I know how this story ends. David didn't have what we have. And he defeated a Goliath. You and I have the word. We know how the story ends. Come on, I've been through some battles. Come on, I, I've fallen down. But you know what? There's the power of the resurrection. I keep getting back up. Come on, you're a child of God. It's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Amen. You will quicken your mortal body. Come on. Yes. Come on. I'm not backing down from any giant. These are real giants. I know they're real fears. They're real sins. They're real demons. Come on. You hear the term. He, he's, rest, he's battling with his demons. His demons overcame them. Come on, we're not going to be overcome by the demons. That's we're right. going to overcome them in Jesus' That's name. Right. Amen. Come on, when we begin to sing, I want you to run. I want you to run towards your Goliath. Yes. Come on, you might have just a few, a small, smooth stone, but that's all it takes. You know, someone once, some, some preacher said of Goliath, the people said, he's too big to fight. But David said, he's too big to miss. That's right. Amen. Come on, let's sing. Let's praise. Come on, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is here. Come on, some giants are coming down in Jesus' name. The giant of fear. The giant of oppression. The giant of depression. Come on, the giant of sin. The giant of what people have said. Giant of sickness and disease is coming down in Jesus' name. Let's sing it.
stone and you pull it back. Those are the kind of that I grew up with, right? That's that's what we know in, in, in the in, in US, right? But though the, the slingshot in the Bible days were a piece of leather with string and they'd put that stone in the leather and they you see it sometimes in Israel when they have these little skirmishes and they let go. And you know there was a tribe in uh, in Israel, the Benjaminites, and they could 
they, they were so skilled, they were left-handed, they were known and when they went out to war. You read it in the scriptures that they can split a hair from I forgot what distance. They were like Tom Brady throwing a football <laughs> with precision. And that sling, they can split a hair. They were known. They were, they were, they were the, 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 the super warriors or the, the, what do you call them in the army? The warriors? No. Oh, soldiers? Sniper. Sniper, yeah, yeah. What do they call that best? What's that best elite? The seals. The seals. The seals. Thank you. Thank you. They were the seals of the Israelites. But this morning, I want you. Come on. I want you to please stay with me. I want you to envision whatever giants you're facing. It could be plural. And this morning, we're singing that song. They still. Do we still believe? Let's go old school. Do we still believe in the power of the blood of Jesus? Get out your slings. Come on. Come on. Get them out. Come on. Get them out. Come on. And, and when he sings, God's turning. God's going to turn it around. Come on. God's turning things right around. David did with faith with the power of the Holy Spirit and I envision that giant coming down and I believe that for you this morning and I want to pray that those giants would begin to fall I'm going to continue this message next Sunday but we've got enough this Sunday to, to, to take the giant down we'll finish them off next Sunday but he's coming down this Sunday. He's coming down this Sunday. Giants are falling this Sunday. Because there's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, because what the enemy meant for evil, God's turning it around for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. Lord, even this morning, in this place, God, there is a people of faith. There is a people who love you. 
There is a people who have consecrated themselves to you. They've entrusted their life to you. But the devil has messed with us. The devil has come against us. There have been giants that are trying to defy you and defy the work of God in our life. But God, this morning we believe they're coming down in the authority of Jesus' name. Lord, I pray over my brothers and sisters this morning. God, every giant that would try to rob them and kill them and destroy them and rob their inheritance, everyone that would defy the work of God in their life, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that they would have a fight in their spirit, they would have a jump and a bounce in their step, and they would run after the Goliaths, and in the name of the Lord, they would take him down. Lord, you said in your word, through my God, I shall do valiantly, through my God, I shall run through a troop and leap over a wall. God, there's no... No devil that is a match for your name. There's no Goliath that is a match for the mighty name of Jesus. And so, God, we pray right now over every need that represented today. We believe that giants are coming down. And we believe, God, you are turning things around. The very thing the devil has tried to do to destroy us, God, you are using to develop us and to bless us and so God today we decree it we declare it in the mighty name of Jesus that we are giant slayers we are overcomers those giants have been in the way much too long they're coming down in the name of Jesus they're coming down in the name of Jesus they're being defeated in the name of Jesus Lord, we thank you that this is just the beginning of the fruit of our fast. This is just the beginning of a new thing that you are doing. A new season is coming. There's a shift in the atmosphere. God, what we've been through has developed us and has put something in us. There's steel in our soul. There's iron in our soul like Joseph of old. Because the word of God has tested us. And so Father, today I pray that not one, not one person would leave here with their head hanging low. But they would lift up their countenance. And they would know, God, that you are going to be glorified and you're going to work through them. And we pray and we, we seal it in the matchless and the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. amen and amen. God bless you. Would you just be seated for a moment? Just a moment. Pastor Mike is going to come. Thank you so much, team. Thank you for your ministry. We appreciate it. What a blessing. What a blessing. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So now we just downshift. No, we just downshift a little bit, and um, man, you're looking, you're looking good, you're looking good. You lost a few pounds, I heard. How much did you lose? I don't know if you want to share. Uh, he's very humble. He don't want to say it. I lost some pounds. <laughs> Thirty-six pounds. Praise the Lord. I lost ten. Uh, I got a ways to go. Amen. Amen. What a good message this morning. Good well, we do want to shift gears. We want to share some upcoming events as well as pray over our offering. But we also want to take a moment just to, to recognize what today is. As many of you know that 21 years ago, the landscape of New York City was changed forever. Mm. And so we want to take a moment to honor uh, the families who are still. Today is a day of sadness for them as they recall uh, family members True. who are lost in the World Trade Center. At 8.46 a.m. of uh, September 11, 2001, a plane hit the North Tower at 9.03 a.m. Another plane hit the South Tower. Close to 3,000 people died. And, and so for us, sometimes it's easy to move on. But the, the phrase that was, that was coined after this was to never forget. And so we as a church want to recognize those who are still mourning. So, Father, we just pray right now. And we recognize that there are families today, God, who are just reflecting back, God, to 
this, this terrible thing that was done in our nation. Thank you. But Lord, even as the message was has gone out this morning, Lord, we know that you defeat giants, God. Yes, yes. Lord, that things like this do not go unseen from your eyes, Father. And we just pray, God, that you would look at our nation again. Yes. And Lord, that we would surrender to you through any kind of attack, any kind of corruption, God. We just give it to you, Father. Help, help, God. And God, just let your peace surround those who are mourning still. Yes, yes. All those victims, God, those families that are still just dealing with the frustration and bitterness and the anger, God. Yes. You can turn things around God you bring peace God amongst the chaos and thank we, you Lord we take a moment to do that right now as a church we just sit and we pause and we thank reflect you, Lord. God. and Lord help us as a church to be a light in our community amen amen in Jesus name we Jesus pray name. Amen. Amen. amen and amen well we do want to take a moment and again welcome you if this is your first time here at Victory Church can we have a nice loud welcome to our first time here? We want to encourage you to plug in and get connected into the church. We know that some of you have been coming for a few weeks, but still haven't filled out a connection card. And the reason we want you to do that is so we can pray with you. We can plug you into things that are happening in the life of the church. So if you could take a moment and do that, and on your way out, you'll see our welcome desk, which is right in the foyer. You can bring it there. We have a really cool gift that we want to share with you. Amen? Amen. We want to connect you to people and to the life of the church. A few quick announcements. New life groups are beginning this Wednesday. Yeah. You guys excited? So it's a great way to stay connected midweek. So we want to encourage everyone to come out. We have youth ministry. We have children's ministry as well as nursery. And we're going to be starting a new series in the youth group, which we're really excited Amen. about on the spiritual gifts. So God has something for everyone this Wednesday night. Amen? Amen. We have an event coming up with the youth group as well. We're going to be doing an outing. How many know it's good to get out? get out of your house and do something, we're going to be taking the youth to Mulligan's Island for mini golf. So any parents who have teens that want to do this, we got a great deal. Mulligan's Island was actually voted one of the number one golf courses, mini golf courses in New England. Oh, I didn't wow. know that. So we're going to go and face that giant and try and take it down. So if any parents who have teens, we have uh, permission slips on the Welcome Center with all the information. You can register them through the church app. And we also have something that we're going to give away as well to the winner because they have two courses. We have a nice engraved trophy that's going wow. to go to the winner. Super and so Bowl trophy. It's, we have two of them because there's two courses. And so it's going to be a lot of fun. Parents, you don't want your teams to miss out on this, David. I think I'm sending going to send them back and maybe have our names inscribed on each one of them. Because, you know, so you guys are going to have to come out and try and take us down. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Another great, exciting event is our church picnic. How many of you love our church picnic? That is going to be next Sunday. It's going to be at Lincoln Woods. Everyone say Lincoln Woods. Lincoln Woods. On our church app, we have all the information, including a map, directions, and exactly where our church is going to be. It's going to be field A and B. You can bring your own lunch after service, stop somewhere, get some good food, and then we're going to meet there. We're going to have some games, some fellowship. We have plenty of space to spread out. So come and be a part of that. Invite some family members. How many of you are going to be there next week? It is going to be a blast. So just take some time and come out and connect at our church picnic. We also have a brief business meeting for official members. That's going to be September uh, 21st at 8.15 p.m. It's a Wednesday. We're going to end a little bit early, and we're going to meet um, in the sanctuary here. And we're going to go over just the business aspect of things, finances, give some updates on the youth expansion as well. And then lastly, we have an outreach coming up, a great outreach opportunity on Saturday, September 24th uh, from 12 to 3. We're, our church is just going to go for a couple hours, and what we're going to do is set up a tent, and we're going to get to pray for people in our community. Uh, and Nick, our councilman, is going all out. They're going to have food trucks. They're going to have the fire department, the police horses. They're going to be games, giveaways. This is a great opportunity for our community to come out and for our church to be a part of that. Yes. So we're going to have a table. We need prayer teams, people who can just walk around and love on people. So if you'd like to be a part of that, come see myself or Pastor Maureen, and we'll make sure to get you plugged in. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, you guys ready to give this morning? Yes. Yes. So let's stand as we just read the Word of God, I want to share a scripture before we pray over the offering. And for some of us, our, our giant can be finances, as Pastor mentioned. And one of the best ways to get rid and slay that giant is to give. Did you know that? So if you want ammo for your sling against the giant of finances, tithes and offerings and giving is a great 
opportunity to do that. And so in Genesis 13, we see in the scriptures, it says, So Abraham went up from Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him, into the Negev. Now Abram was very rich in livestock. Did you hear that? He was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. And he journeyed on from the Negev as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, to the place where he had made an altar at the first. And there Abram called upon the name of the Lord. And the second character we have in this story is Lot, in verse 5. And Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds, so that the land could not support both of them dwelling together. So we know that they had so much possessions and finances that they couldn't dwell together together. How many would like to have that problem? Yeah. <laughs> and it says, and there was strife between the herdsmen of Abraham, Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. And then in verse 8, it says that Abram said to Lot, let there be no strife between you and me and between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me. And if you take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. And it says, And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw that the Jordan Valley was well watered, everything like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt in the direction of Zoar. And then it says, So Lot chose for himself all the Jordan Valley, and Lot journeyed east, thus separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled among the cities of the valley and moved his tent as far as Sodom. And the perspective I want to share with you this morning in our giving and our tithes and offering is you have two men, but you have two perspectives. One didn't have a lot more, one didn't have a lot less. They both had so much possessions that they actually had to separate. But how many of you know sometimes your possessions can possess you? And there's a different perspective and a different way to live when you allow your possessions to possess you. And Abram could have said, well, I have all this stuff, but I need to protect it. And so I'm going to choose from my eyes what I think is best. But no, what he did is he let it go because his trust and his faith was in his God. That's right. right. And it says that Lot lifted his eyes and he looked with his eyes to see what he thought was best. Right. And we know that his possessions and that mindset ended up destroying his family. Right. And so I don't want my family to be destroyed because I'm allowing what God has given me to possess me. And so this morning as we it's good. give, it's good. we want to have faith. We don't want to look with our own eyes at things and, and, and think that we have to save and hold on to what we have. God will bless you. God will provide for you because he said it in his word. Amen? Amen. I want to have the eyes of Abram. And in 2 Corinthians it says we walk by faith, not by what? Sorry. By sight. Amen. Lot had sight, but he didn't have faith. Abram had faith. And so we want you to have faith this morning as you give. We have the offering baskets here at the front. We have the ways to give, which will be on the screen behind me. We also have the QR codes in the seat pockets in front of you. If you want to fill out a connection card, scan that QR card. If you want to give, scan that gift code, and it'll take you directly to our online giving page to make it easier for you. But let's just pray and ask God to give us faith to see his provision. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we pray right now over this entire church, God, that as we come and we give to you, Lord, that we would have the heart of Abram, who knew that he and you had blessed him, God, and he didn't have to try and take territory for himself to protect his possessions, but Lord, he stepped back and allowed Lot to do what he wanted to do, and it says that he settled in Canaan. And Lord, I pray this morning that we would settle where you have us right now. That we wouldn't reach out, but God, that you would give us the faith to believe that you are going to provide this morning. We pray over this offering. We ask that it will be multiplied. It would be good use in our community and our cities. We pray for our missionaries. We pray for our youth and outreach expansion, God. And we pray that the finances will go above and beyond to cover it so that we can see your kingdom advance in the mighty name of Jesus. And right now, God, we seal it. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. As you come forward, you can give. And then we just want to say, God bless you. Go in peace. And we will see you this 